Welcome to episode three of the Swift Playhouse screencast. How to dry out your zombies. If you dry out a zombie, is that the same thing as a mummy? Yes, that's exactly the same thing. So the code you're looking at is uh, originally from Tammy Coron's beginning sprite kit series on raywinderlick.com, part eight, uh, in which you make a game called Zombie Conga. What we're looking at here is just an, an if else statement um, that's set up to change the background and the sound file that's played if you win or lose the game. So normally when we go through the challenges for the Ray Wonderlick videos, we'll see if there's anything... Just anything that we could factor just to say, how else could we do this thing that we're looking at? What other tools can we use other than an if-else statement in this case? So in this case we're seeing some repetition of code, um, so we're going to try to apply the dry principle to it, just, just as practice. Dry. D-R-Y. D-R-Y. Don't repeat yourself. Yes. I wasn't telling you not to repeat yourself what? specifically, but it's what the principle means. Thank you. <laughs> so let's <laughs> go to our first attempt, right? Yes. Okay, so this is your favorite, using a closure. So we'll assign what we're calling outcome via a closure. It's going to return a background and an SK action, which we're calling play sound. Afterwards, we'll run that action. We'll assign uh, the background using the outcome tuple. So this is slightly more complex than what we ended up deciding was best to use in the end, but it got us started down an interesting road. Right now, we have a closure, so it's an anonymous function, and it's very easy to just assign the result of that to whatever you want. But what if the function were anonymous? Is, is that a thing? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Nobody says it. All right, anonymous fun. That doesn't work. Not if you say, uh, A. Oh, no, it doesn't work at all. Oh my god. Okay, so now we have named the closure effectively, so it's a function. Okay, so it's a function now. Um, but we can't name it the same as the constant because it, the constant now, here's the error, the definition, this outcome constant is now conflicting with the function with the same name. Swift doesn't know how to figure that out. Even if you were to say, if you, even if you were to explicitly type this outcome as being this type, it still would not compile. It doesn't know how to deal with that. So how do we fix this? Well, we could do this, which is just to use a capital letter instead, which people don't do in Swift, generally. Yes, yeah, basically um, it's an initializer for outcome. And because this is really, these two values make up what we're calling an outcome, and this is making an outcome, it really is an initializer for that. It just isn't technically an initializer. But we'll find that we're going to make some initializers in this screencast, and the usage of them will look exactly the same because Swift uses this Pascal case thing to mean several different things. Okay, so what if we do, do a type alias for the function? To say that it returns an outcome. Right. Again, this is not going to compile. If we try to define what outcome is and then say that outcome is returned from the what's effectively the initializer of outcome, because again, you can't have a function that has the same name as a type alias. That seems pretty absurd. I understand where it's coming from, but if you were to say that we have an outcome and it were a real type, then you could use the syntax and this would no longer be a function, it would be an initializer and it would work out fine. But it doesn't work out until you really put it in a type. So let's put it in a type. My thinking here is you have these specific outcome options. You can win or you can lose. That sounds to me like an enumeration. You have cases. Right. Internally, 
These things are represented differently via a function, a type alias, and now an enumeration, but when you use them externally, it's all the same. This is looking more like how I would model this from my brain. Um, but right now, we have this run action outside of the enumeration. Can we put that inside of the enumeration as a function? Yeah, instead of returning an action, can we just directly have the outcome have a play sound function? Let's try it out. That's what that would look like, but now we have this error. Enum declaration cannot close over value self, defined in outer scope. Which means this run run action belongs to the SK scene that this class game over scene is, and you don't have access to that within this enumeration, whether it would be in the type itself if we said outcome were, you know, out here, or as it is within a function, it doesn't it doesn't implicitly have access to self because if we were to use self this would now refer to the outcome there you go all right so why don't we just store this self in the enum because an enumeration does not come with storage crap <laughs> so but a struct allows you to store things, so we can change it to be a struct. Now what we don't get to do is have our cases of winning and losing, but... Yeah, this, I mean, this basically takes away the whole reason I, I wanted to make a type in the first place. Right, and... Which was to give it discrete cases. And now we also are dealing with this extra level of complexity where we have to pass in a game over scene. It's like, we want to be clear, but we're being punished for trying to be clear. We're just adding all this um, unnecessary complexity when what we really want to do is simplify. Right. So in a di here's another piece of complexity because we could store in outcome the game over scene. We could store the file name variation, but that adds that clutters up outcome itself so instead let's do this which is you know storing a closure for play sound instead of a function but if we didn't do that then it would be you know i, I don't think there's a good solution here really that looks super clean so this is again a problem with nesting right if if we could refer to the outside scope as something like parent self this might be all right but we can't do that right and if it were a funk that would work fine. Okay, so let's go back to a function. Then. Yeah, let's do that. So here we have funk outcome again, and we're, we're returning the same kind of thing that we were a, a, a sp SK sprite node and a play sound closure. But now we are able to actually access self because now outcome isn't a type and it can refer to this outer scope of game over scene. So then we make an outcome. It's not really an initializer anymore, but I don't really see how it's that different. Right, it's... so this, this works, but we still have the naming problem. Yeah. Having these differences between functions, instructs, and closures leads to some absurdity. I think we only really have a difference between functions, structs, and closures because if you didn't have all of them, then Swift would have probably seemed too weird to people and they wouldn't have picked it up if you just had one thing that did all of that. But now we have extra complexity because we're trying to please people maybe? I'm really not sure. So this isn't exactly what we ended up with. What, what did we finish up with doing? Tell us about your final idea. So I think, yeah, we probably over-engineered that. And what was really <laughs> what was really changing was the sound file name and the image file name. So we can use a closure and just, you know, return those two. And I think this is probably the right way to not repeat ourselves. But we went through this interesting process of learning about, oh, we try to try to make things clear. Yeah, we're, we're trying to model our thoughts here um, pretty directly but sometimes Swift just fights us, just a little. <laughs>